Hello everyone. Today we'll be discussing about ecological classification of plants. So, what is this classification? How are they grouped? Let's see. So, ecological groups or classification includes group of plants growing under the same set of environmental factors. Environmental factors means like for example sunlight. Some group of plants grow in hot regions while some grow only in cool climatic regions. If you take uh, example of water, some group of plants are terrestrial plants. I mean the plants which grow on land while some are aquatic which grow in water. If you see background of this concept, the ecological groupings were first made by warming in 1895 based on substratum that means soil and adaptive factors so that's all about the background and now let's see the major classifications or major groupings basically there are five ecological plant groups which include hydrophytes epiphytes mesophytes xerophytes and halophytes let's see hydrophytes first this word hydrophytes is derived from greek language hudur plus python hudur means water and python means plant hydrophytes are the plants which are adopted to grow in or nearby the water bodies they may be partly or wholly submerged in water so the water can be fresh or saline they have either poorly developed root system or sometimes no root system at all they can withstand the absence of oxygen that is anaerobic condition stomatas are absent in these plants and the stems are soft and usually weak so stomata are nothing but minute pores which are present on leaves or stems generally help in exchange of carbon dioxide and water between plants and atmosphere going further we have the subdivisions of hydrophytes based on their relation to water and air these plants are subdivided into five they are free floating hydrophytes rooted floating hydrophytes submerged floating hydrophytes rooted submerged hydrophytes amphibious hydrophytes first we have is free floating hydrophytes these plants float freely on surface of water they remain in contact with air and water but not soil that means these plants are not attached to soil and their roots are just above the soil second we have is rooted floating hydrophytes the roots of these plants are fixed in mud but you know the leaves and flowers are floating on surface of water they generally grow in shallow water regions where the you know depth of water is not much and get in contact with air water and soil the next is submerged floating hydrophytes so these plants are completely submerged in water and don't get in contact with soil and air example is ceratophyllum the fourth we have is rooted submerged hydrophytes these plants are also submerged in water but they have roots they are restricted to shallow areas again where they get adequate supply of sunlight example hydrilla the last one in the subdivision of hydrophytes is amphibious hydrophytes. I hope you guys know what amphibians are. Like we have amphibians, I mean the animals which live on both land and water. We have amphibious hydrophytes also. These amphibious hydrophytes are adapted to both aquatic and terrestrial modes of life. They grow in shallow water regions again and form shallow vegetation. These plants have well developed root systems. Example, typhon. The next one after hydrophytes we have is xerophytes. These plants grow in dry habitats like you know deserts, sand hills, rock surfaces etc. In simple they are drought loving plants. They store water in their organs for a long period of time so you know they don't often require water. They are modified to withstand unfavorable conditions like very hot climatic conditions. Most of these plants have very deep and extensive root system for water absorption, you know, from the depth of the soil. Uh, the stem is stunted in growth and form a bushy-like appearance. Based on the ability to withstand the unfavorable conditions or, you know, drought-resisting power, xerophytes are further divided into three types. 
which include ephemerals, drought enduring and drought resisting plants. Ephemerals are also called drought escaping and drought evading plants. These plants live for a very short period of time. They are called annuals. You know what annual means? Uh, plants which complete their life cycle in one growing season and then dies. That is annuals. During critical dry periods, these plants survive in the form of seeds or propagals. And when the conditions are favorable, the, the seeds generate into small new baby plants. These plants are small in size and they have restricted growth and you know they require very low amount of water. Next we have is succulents or dot enduring plants. These plants store water in their plant organs like stem, leaves, roots for their dry periods. And they develop certain adaptive characters to resist extreme drought conditions. In some xerophytic plants, stems become juicy or succulent. These are called fleshy xerophytes. And those succulents in which leaves are fleshy are called malacohyllus xerophytes. Next we have is drought resisting or non succulents. These drought resisting plants are true xerophytes. They possess a number of morphological, anatomical and physiological characteristics which enable them to withstand the critical dry condition. They exhibit rapid root growth and form an extensive root systems to maximize their water supply from the depth of the soil. The third in the classification we have is mesophytes. Mesophytes are terrestrial plants requiring a moderate or average amount of moisture. They make up largest ecological group of terrestrial plants. They grow under moderate to hot and humid climatic regions. They have well developed root systems. Leaves are generally large, broad, thin with different shapes. Going further, we have two major communities of uh, mesophytes. One is community of grasses and herbs. Second is community of woody plants. Community of grasses and herbs. This includes annual or perennial grasses and herbs. And under this we have three subtypes. The Arctic and Alpine mud, grassland and mud herbage, meadow, pastured on cultivated land. The Arctic and Alpine mud grasslands and mud herbage are commonly found in polar regions and mountain tops. They include mostly small shrubs. And meadow generally represent an intermediate link between mesophytes and hydrophytes, and they require like around 60 to 83 percent of moisture content. These plants are tall herbs with long stems. Pasture and cultivated land, uh, here uh, the vegetation is shorter and more open. Grazing activities generally disturb this type of vegetation. Another community of mesophytes is community of woody plants. Under this category, we have again three subcategories which include mesophytic bushland, deciduous forest, evergreen forest. Mesophytic community occurs where temperature and other climatic conditions are not favorable for growth of forest but herbage vegetation. In many places, xerophytic and mesophytic bushlands merge with each other. Next is deciduous forest. These are distributed in temperate, cold or tropical regions where annual rainfall is 80 to 150 centimeters. Defoliation of leaves happens for every 5 to 8 months of foliation. Defoliation is nothing but loss of leaves. Mosses and lichens grow on surface of these trees. The last in woody plants is evergreen forest. They are found in tropical and subtropical regions and are always green. I mean they are evergreen plants. Very few plant species in these forests may show leaf fall or defoliation. They are also found in cold temperate zones of uh, southern hemisphere. Going further, we have two major subdivisions in evergreen forest. One is tropical evergreen forest or tropical rainforest and the other is subtropical forest. 
Tropical evergreen forests are generally found in low-lying low regions and uh, grow in areas which receive rainfall of 180 cm or more. The plants are about 40 to 50 meters in height. They are mostly dense. Subtropical forests are found in areas with heavy rainfall but where temperature differences between winter and summer are less marked. Plants are about 30 meters in height here. The fourth one in the classification includes epiphytes. So epiphytes are basically plants which grow on other plants. They have no contact with the ground because they are already standing on the other plants. So uh, these plants are also called air plants. Most of the epiphytes are found in tropical rainforests. Their ability to grow above the ground level provides them more accessible to sunlight than the herbs which generally grow on ground. These plants obtain water and some other nutrients from the rain. They may also receive some nutrients released from the supporting plants by decomposition. They absorb water from their roots or specialized leaves. Despite growing on other plants, the root system is extensively developed in these plants. We may find two types of roots. One is clinging root and the other is aerial root. Clinging root fix the epiphyte firmly on the surface of the supporting plant. Aerial uh, roots hang downwardly and absorb moisture from the atmosphere. The last classification we have is halophytes. These are the special type of plants which grow on soils with high concentration of salts. They use some you know filtration process to use the salt water. Uh, they are basically found near seashores and estuaries or in simple if we say near coastal areas. Uh, only 2% of uh, plant species found on earth are halophytes. According to Stalker, the critical level or saturated point of salinity required for plant is 0.5% of dry weight. Further, if we see, we have three types of halophytes. They are aquahalines, terrestrohalines, and aerohalines. Under aquahalines, we have two types. One is immersed halophytes, where most of the plant stem remains above the water level. Second is hydrohalophytes. Here, the plant is almost or completely submerged under water. Under terrestrohalines, we have three types again. First is hydrohalophytes, the plants which grow on swampy lands. Second is mesohalophytes, the plants which grow on non-swampy or non-dry lands. Third is zero halophytes, uh, the plants which grow on dry or mostly dry lands. The last is aerohalines. I would say in 1936 classified aerohalines into three types with respect to salinity percentage of the soil on which those plants grow. First is oligohalophytes. These plants grow where the amount of sodium chloride in soil is 0.01 to 0.1 percent. The mesohalophytes grow where the amount of sodium chloride is 0.1 to 1 percent in the soil. The euhalophytes grow where the amount of sodium chloride in soil is above 1 percent. These are some of the other type of plants which I have included here. They are oxalophytes, the plants which grow on acid soils, lithophytes which grow on rocks, sampophytes which grow on sand and gravels, chersophytes which grow on wastelands, eremophytes which grow on deserts and steppes, cycrophytes which grow on cold soils. Thank you guys. I hope you have understood everything clearly. Thank you for watching. Please like and comment.